Botanical Garden Foundation on the second Saturday, uh, the second Saturday morning of most months. Um, Peregrine Joel Franklin is our guest this morning. He owns Peregrine's Flowers on Highland Road in Starring, as well as the Peregrine's Home Store in Perkins Road. This morning's program is from Peregrine's Christmas Store, also in Perkins Road. Joel is an artist, first and foremost. He sees and makes beauty everywhere, even in unlikely materials. And this morning, he will share this artist's eye vision with you to use in your own home. Joel is an alumnus of Southern University and LSU. He studied horticulture, landscape design, art and design, and honed these studies for years and very strong retail experience working for Maison Blanche all over the South. His talents were invaluable in everything from window dressing to painted backdrops, displays, and advertising campaigns. He and his wife, Mika, with whom he has three sons, founded Peregrines 26 years ago, and then they've won many awards for excellence regionally as well as nationally. He is joined today by designer and event coordinator, Melanie Jordan. Joel is a true naturalist, an artist, a designer with blooms and textures and tone. He says, that's what makes me tick. This program is going to be added to the catalog of videos at the Baton Rouge Public Library, and we will be available online for viewing in about a week. So you can pick up on the things you missed when the doorbell rang or the soup boiled over. Go to the library's website to locate this program. We have some splendid upcoming garden discoveries programs on the second Saturday of each month. In January, LSU landscape architecture architect Buck Abbey will be sharing the history of the botanical gardens. In February, Kitty Bull, Master Gardener and Herb Society member, will be making children's container gardens focus on Valentine gnomes, fairies, and critters. Check the library website for updates. Thank you for coming today. It is my delight to introduce to you Peregrine Joel Franklin, a true artist. And Darcy, how's it, how's it sounding? It sounded good. We can hear everything quite well. Excellent. All right. Hello and good morning. And thanks for joining us here at Peregrine's Flores and Christmas Store. Today, we're going to show you various tones and textures and things that really make the holiday season come to life. We strongly believe here at Peregrine's that uh, nature's bounty is what makes us tick. We love designs. We like natural things. And so we're just going to take you through a tour this morning and let you see the things that we often do on a day in a day out basis at Peregrine's Flores and Christmas Store. And to join us, we have our designer and events coordinator, Ms. Melody Jordan. Hi, very nice to meet everybody. I'll be assisting Joel today with showing you some of the botanicals that we use straight from nature, uh, pine cones, magnolia, leaves, blossoms, just everything you can find in and around your home. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna talk about the major things that will pull any look together. Quite naturally, pine cones, nature's best. Uh, we believe that all of these items and design elements pull together the perfect look. No matter if you're modern, contemporary, transitional, um, very traditional, uh, we have things that will make it. Things that make things traditional or modern or contemporary often uh, coincide with the container in which you put it. So this would be a real simple design, but it lends itself to be a little more sophisticated, a little more simple compared to this pheasant design. All of them are naturally inspired designs. Here we have taken a classic urn, a reproduction, and we have taken pheasant feathers with the mosses and uh, hydrangea, which is preserved, and we have a big array of uh, with a preserved product. So these things are botanically preserved. So everything here is a natural thing, but we have some that are latex, some that are preserved, some that are fresh, like the mosses that we've used, the salal leaves around the collar. So you'd say, well, why does this look like Christmas? It reminds me of Christmas because it blends itself in uh, interior design with antiques. Uh, and we might add some uh, gold pine cones or things around here to really embellish it and make it come to life. But all these natural pieces uh, create uh, the total look for a home. We also like to do a lot of uh, containers. This is a gorgeous container, a bronze piece. And it has stair cords and we've just filled it with pine cones and some of the natural fresh greenery. So it doesn't have to be an elaborate arrangement to be pretty. Uh, 
we feel that if you collect things that you like, probably this was an heirloom piece that someone had that was handed down uh, generation for generation. And then the pine cones, we just kind of glitzed them with some diamond dust or a goldish glitter. And it's just real simple. It could be a masculine design. It could be a very magnificent design. It just depends on where you place it. Once again, So there's no design, but we've just kind of softened up the container. It's not as elaborate. And if you can see this, we've added little pine cones to the paper white and the bugs. This is a botanically preserved arrangement. We have dried items. We have fresh items. Uh, we've got a lot to choose from this morning here. So we're talking about cones and textures and things that really make it tick. We have colors that are not traditional. These colors are more natural. We do have red pieces. We have uh, orange reds. We have a little bit of cranberry apples. So it just depends on what you do because it's so uh, unlimited that you could do with your Christmas decorations. So some people are into the monochromatic whites and ivories and naturals. Some people are into the Delarobia, which are the fruits and the cones and the pods. So all these things could be put or gathered in our Christmas Cranberry. You can take some garlic. Pieces, uh, just to freshen up and make it a little different for the holidays. Have something new, these little berries. Uh, we have some fig leaves down here. Oops. Some of these fig leaves. I don't know if you have any fig leaves in your house too. Just adding something just to just freshen up and change the look of it. Magnolia blossoms, magnolia leaves. I have some too. And you could also accentuate this with ribbons um, with braids and ropes and trims. Uh, if you like to sew or you're a craft person, you can always incorporate fabrications of different textures to pull off a design. Uh, tassels, uh, buttons. And different ribbons too. You know, ribbons is a good thing to pull a theme together. You don't have to have ribbon on everything, but the right ribbon in the right place really makes a difference. So for contemporary people, you might want to use less bows and tails and just do tucks of ribbons. Uh, everybody doesn't like traditional, traditional things. We even have things for people that are more earthy, uh, sort of like this driftwood that was found here in South Louisiana. And it has uh, bromeliads and different air plants and rosier bead plants. And somebody will say, well, how does that work for Christmas? Maybe it's something we can put here like pine cones and little ornaments or embellishments that would really make it come to life in the perfect environment. I think that people should decorate on how they live. If your home is very rustic, I think the decoration should be more rustic. If it's very elegant and sophisticated, then those items should be a little more elegant and sophisticated. Uh, we often talk to our customers about the sights and sounds of Christmas. And we also talk about the smells of Christmas. Uh, candles are the biggest uh, thing that you can do to create that look or that smell or that aroma um, with candles. We have a product here by Nest. Uh, we have three very strong fragrances and we also carry around the natural beeswax candles. This is a must for very traditional designs. We have pillar candles. Um, these are very nice and it gives off a soft aroma uh, for natural wax, almost like a honey smell. These are very good and they come in different sizes and you can put them in candelabras and bowls in your designs. Uh, and it's a very good thing. These are um, amaryllis bulbs that a lot of people grow and they force for the holiday season. Some people have them outside growing in their gardens. This we just cut the top off and then we'll just stick a beeswax candle in inside of it and it'll be on a display. You can put it in a vase, any kind of container you may have some pine things around it and, um, and some magnolia leaves. I love that. And you can even make it a little more contemporary. If you had little you ornaments a little bit of moss. or moss, yeah. just anything from the garden that creates uh, the feel that it's more natural. In any type of situation, contemporary, modern, traditional, transitional, uh, you can interpret any of these pieces within those designs. So it's unlimited what you can do. Another thing that we like to do a lot at Peregrine's, we use obviously pine cones, you hear us say that a lot, but fruit, 
uh, the holiday is a harvest of uh, Delarobia, different fruit, pears, kumquats, apples, pomegranates. These are the textures or the colorations of, that you want to pull in to coordinate with your home. Uh, the fruit are the number one item or design element that will pull that orange together or pull that lemon yellow together or even pull crab apples or cranberries. It's just what you pull together to create that look. Everything that we do, believe it or not, is centered around moss or pods or branches or sticks like the curly willow or the poppy pods uh, back here in the big wreath of the nature of the pine cones and the pine. Uh, there's a lot that goes on to create that look. And no, it's not all masculine. It's just what you put with it. We have a masculine a deer head made out of uh, straw or twigs, and we've incorporated with a real pretty uh, glistening ribbon to kind of make it a little more formal. That's something you can have that might be at your house near the decor already, and just adding a little bit of something to it just changes up the look and just brings you that holiday spirit. So also, I just picked up one of these um, lotus seed pots that we have painted gold. Uh, we love to use really anything we have around, and it's um, it's just using your imagination and using what you do have and find and what we provide and pair friends to change the decor of your house for each season. And we often bring in artifacts and different pieces, relics, uh, found items, uh, pieces that really pull a total look together. This is a very popular piece we've had throughout the years. It's a metal uh, hammered piece. This one has a little uh, bronze patina on a metal background. This is very popular. And each year we have uh, limited editions of these items that are made by man in North Carolina. And um, he's patented, but it's a really good, like a, a pressed stamp design, but it's made out of metal. These can be used uh, as a functional piece to go outdoors and keep them up year round. So this is one of my favorite items and we've got uh, quite a few customers that come back every year to ask about this particular piece. Here we have a piece that's painted on slate and these items can just embellish what you already have. Um, they could be indoors or outdoors. This is a piece of slate and it has a magnolia wreath. Uh, we're all about South Louisiana, pretty things, um, more natural things, uh, but artifacts, Found items, older items, treasured items, heirloom items are very important when you're creating a look or just finishing up that look. Um, I just grabbed some of these pine cones too, just to um, to use to spray to bring some uh, bring some sparkle into the world. A lot of people don't normally um, use that during the year most of the time, but it. In the holidays, they want to bring a little bit of sparkle and cheer to their life. So this is a great way to do it. And if you have something like this on your um, on your table, as you're in your island or the center of your table, just adding a little bit of this to it really changes the whole look. Using the moss and these little uh, popcorn berries. No, this is a, a tallow berry, and this is a, a found item in South Louisiana. There are yep. trees that are just loaded with it right yep. now. It's that uh, berry that's on the tree that has a fiery red and orange to it, and that is what's... The, that's, this is the, the berry. That's, that's, so yep. this is a natural product, and they come in little bundles, and it's called tallow berry. It actually looks like popcorn on a stick. Mm -hmm. But all these gathered items really make the difference for texture. Mm -hmm. Speaking of texture, this is a good... Uh, design of a set of piece that we did and it's very easy and it can be made at the home. This was made on a styrofoam base and we've covered it with burlap. burlap. And so here we've just taken a utility container from the home and we've made a centerpiece that we could just drop it in and we could just put a candle in here. Make sure you put a little water in the base of it so that candle won't stick in the base of that. And we just put hydrangea, amaryllis, magnolia, So you can really um, do your own personal touches uh, when you have a, a good selection of things to come from. This is a nice piece. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a little bubble bowl. This is an artificial piece with the artificial water with the lucite in it. And it's very simple for a bedside or something in a kitchen or just do something really simple. But all of these things are botanically correct and botanically preserved. 
here at Peregrine's, we want to make sure that we have the best quality, uh, the best presence of a design. This piece right here, we often use as a, it could be a rise bouquet, and it's just an exposed steel nosegay, French design. And it has a variety of uh, flowers, like the poinsettia, the queen ants lace. Immaculous right here. Uh, a little greenery. Here's the berries again. This is the queen ants lace right here. There's a little pollen right here as well. But we call this a drop in arrangement. A drop in means you can just take your favorite container and you drop it in here. Voila. It's just very pretty, real simple. It can be doubled as a bridesmaid's bouquet, a bride's bouquet, a centerpiece. Uh, very functional. Uh, these are very popular during the holiday season as a hostess gift, going to a party, uh, presenting something to someone. This is a very popular item. And this is known as a bubble ball that we do. This is another piece that we call a drop in. This could be a bridal bouquet, a bridesmaid's bouquet. It's exposed stems. It could also be used as a drop in. Look how pretty this is. Very simple. Real clean, real contemporary. Uh, thistle, and these are peonies right here. This is um, eucalyptus leaf. Um, it just—it's so simple and sweet, and they're thistle can be used year round. Yeah, so if you fall in love with these pieces, I think you'll have for a lifetime. I've had decorations in my house. I've been married 31 years, and I've had the same decorations that I do year after year after year. But I add something to it. So if you've got a good color scheme going, just kind of add things that you think are special. But if you're a natural person, or you like Louisiana product with the magnolia leaves and the pods and the cones and the grasses and the mosses, then you're the perfect place if you shop at Peregrine's. Uh, we do have things that are more glitzy and more glamorous and the things that are more shiny, but we like all that too, but we think it's a, a distribution of the way in which you put basic greens with glitzy things. I think if you got too much glitz, that's a bad thing, but we all into natural things. And that's the beauty of it because it's natural. I want to talk about that cotton we have up here. We have a cotton wreath, and we sell the product. It's an organic product, so it is uh, botanically correct. But this is a magnolia garland, and we have uh, accented the perimeter of the garland with cotton vials. Uh, you don't have to have a bow on everything. If you see all these designs, you see very limited ribbon or bows. We think ribbon has its place on the top of a Christmas tree or coming through a Christmas tree or on a wreath, but we are here to talk about the product. Um, look at this design at the top. It has pomegranates, amaryllis, hydrangeas, seeded eucalyptus, and it's just like a, a steel gray and a platinum natural oyster white ribbon. We do bows that are called shoestring bows, just like you would tie on your shoes not a gift wrap bow, like a big poofy bow that has a million loops to it. We think that takes away from the, the simplicity and the elegance of a design. If you see this reindeer right here, he has a shoestring bow at his neck, not a bow with multiple tails. We think that's for a gift or a top of a Christmas tree. Uh, proportion is real important as well. Um, these uh, bells, these sleigh bells, I think are very important to put at your front porch. You don't have to decorate it, or if you want, you can. You can simply put some greenery, and like the other ones you show them, like you can do a little bow at the top, but just something to accent it. Um, and bows don't have to be perfect when you use ribbon. It can be real simple. You know, one tail can hang longer than the other. We call it um, more asymmetrical or natural. So if somebody did it who didn't have the skills of a florist or a designer, what would that bow look like? Just keep it real simple, and the tails will have to be perfect. But natural things are never natural. Yeah, and your garland doesn't need to be perfect either. It can drape over your mantle and fall to the ground. It doesn't need to be perfect on either side, even around your door too, um, as your as your entrance piece. Yeah, in one side, it's full and draped around and very natural and more organic feel. Like this is a good example of the blitz. Uh, this has been frosted. This is a natural long leaf pine that we have here in South Louisiana, and we've accented it with dried or preserved magnolia leaves from last year, last season. So we are pack rats. We don't throw too much away. We'll uh, preserve it or organize it and put it away. But these leaves are from our uh, 2019 collection. These are fresh or preserved at this point magnolia leaves that we've uh, secured with wires. We don't use hot glue too much because hot glue usually 
uh, breaks off and it's not as durable as wire. So uh, a real florist person, a person who has skills would often take wires and secure everything to the back of the reef. So this is a natural reef that we have wired all this. It takes a little more time to do it, but I think in the end, it's uh, a little so more if quality. It's, if it's going to last you too. It's something that's going to last from year to year and something that, as we've been saying, that you can add things to it, like yeah. this little teeny bow. And, and we call them investment pieces. If you like it, you'll enjoy it more. And then if you change the decor style, you can always pass it on to a family friend or best friend. And I think that's the thing that we tell our customers uh, when they say, well, well, I have too many reasons. I have too many snags. I have too many verticals. Well, if you've enjoyed it, pass it on to someone else and simply change it around. And a lot of our design teams here at the Christmas store will often tell you that ribbon selections are very good. And we've got a real good uh, lady who works in our area who is the perfect mix and match for ribbons and different braids and things. <laughs> All right. Now let's talk about some embellishments, some things that really pull things together. We have some bells. You know, these are natural. They're uh, made out of a wicker. So if you see what we're doing, we never show you red things or purple things or gold things or silver things because we are talking about fresh, alive, natural product. Uh, you see the ribbon that Melody has here. This is like a chicken wire that's been flocked with moss. And so we think that all these things can be gathered at holiday time and uh, add different things to them like magnolia, hydrangea, uh, pine cones, even poinsettia blooms to really pull a look together. So I think uh, if you're able to achieve a look, uh, it's Christmas time so everybody knows why you're decorating. You don't have to have red or gold, but if it's done correctly, uh, that would be great as an embellishment to put on a set of these bells. And what would you do with these bells? Well, I would put them on a door, on, on a table, on a lantern outside, put them on a table, put them maybe on top of an armoire with some sticks and branches. You can so, even add a little bit around the around the base, too. Uh, some garland around the base, I think, would be really pretty as well. Just um, the really possibilities are endless. And you have the materials that you can find in around your home or around your neighbor's home, and um, you can just add it to the decorations you have. Okay, berries are very important. We cannot sell enough berries in our store at Christmas time. It could be gold berries, platinum berries, red berries, cranberries, just anything with berries. I think that is the number one product that people identify with holiday with, are sticks and berries. If you've got a, a wonderful oriental blue and white urn or vase or pairs of vases or urns on the mantelpiece, that's always very special to just do a real big upright design with berries and holly and magnolia and curly willow sticks uh, even pine out of the pine tree long needle pine so believe it or not you've got a lot of that in your yard and your surroundings that you could do uh just have a good reference point yeah like just something here's um, a little sprig of the eucalyptus a little juniper berry some evergreen and here's some sticks that just dried sticks added to a little magnolia Add a little bit of the berry to it as well. Very natural, organic. Now this piece would be more for a contemporary customer. And often people will say, well, where is the design? Where's the flowers? This is a design. It's very simple. It's very minimal. And if you look at some of the home decor and fashion magazines, this is really the hottest thing around. It's called a simple moss bowl. This is a preserved sheet moss. And it's never a ball, it's just kind of like nondescript. This is very sophisticated, real high end. They come in any style, shape, you can put it in any container. And some people call it magic moss, but it's just uh, a traditional sheet moss. And we put styrofoam in here. We don't glue it, we take hairpins of, that we make out of wire and we secure it in here. But this can be used on a coffee table, it can be used on a dining room table. It's just real simple. So for people who don't like a lot of stuff for holiday or Christmas, it's just real minimal. And you might say, well, what is that? So it's in that right environment, it really makes a difference. I want to share with you another piece that's pretty important. Just give me one second. We love found items. This is a piece of driftwood, you know, I'm sure you can find driftwood, you can buy driftwood, but you can do anything with this. You can hang it on a wall like this. You can hang it upside down. You can use it as a bowl. 
And here we would use it as a bowl. So what would we do with this piece? You know, you can take a pick or a spray. You can put pine cones. And this could be very modern. It could be contemporary. It could be traditional or it could be transitional. And you say, what is transitional? Transitional is having some modern mixed in with the traditional. Uh, so it just depends on what do you like. Uh, we often have ornaments that you can add to this. You can add some glass orbs if you got uh, the decorator color. Um, but you have to just keep it simple and do it what you like. Um, there's a lot of ideas in magazines, uh, a lot of things on television, a lot of things on the internet. But I feel that things that coordinate with your interiors and your makeup will really make a difference. Are there any questions or anything? Sure. You know, I have some nice berries in my yard. How do I preserve those for an arrangement? Did everybody hear the question? If he had a lot of nice berries in his yard, how would he preserve them for Christmas? Well, I think the natural part and the beauty about those berries that you would harvest from your yard would be to cut them and then put them in your favorite vase of containing and let them do what they often do. I would not try to add water to them. I just let them dry and take on a natural cause. And to me, that would be a little more sophisticated way of doing things instead of putting water, because sometimes water would just make them rot and all the berries would fall off. But if you kind of put those uh, berries or blossoms in the vase or whatever, they'll just kind of stay in time just like that. You know, you'd be surprised how long they'll last. So I deeply encourage that. These, these dry, wonderful. Oh yes, the uh, just... talaberry. You, they don't have very long stems, but sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But if you cut them, uh, you can use them year after year. That's a dried product. Believe it or not, dried product was very important about 10 years ago, and it's coming back heavy, heavy, heavy this uh, winter and this spring. Uh, hydrangeas, mosses, uh, the biggest thing I've seen are those little sea roses, sweetheart roses, uh, even large head roses. Uh, they are even uh, dry peonies. Um, roses are very important. It's not always that they're the most sophisticated thing because it's what you put them in that you've made your design out of. So you can put it in a glass container, a wood container. Uh, brass is very important. So I think everybody should have a really good collection of containers depending on what you like and where you like to put them in your home. All right. Any more questions? Let's talk about some of these things back here. This is a little more contemporary piece. This is in an oblong clear glass container. And what we've done is put uh, assimilated water in the bottom. So it's like a lucite solution and it looks real. This is a botanically preserved piece. If you look on this side, we have miniature pine cones in the lucite water we call. And then we have uh, amaryllis, we have cabbage roses, we have the black magic roses, we've got seeded eucalyptus, we've got all kinds of juniper and firs. And it's not the most uh, symmetrical design. It's very uneven. It's more natural. It looks like somebody just picked it and put it in this container. Fresh picked. Mm -hmm. You want to give me that? This is a more uh, traditional, real fancy design, we would say, even though it's very rustic. It's in an old patina container. It's not old, but it appears to look older. Uh, we've been incorporated some fern in here to just kind of put a collar around the perimeter of this design. Magnolias, these are preserved product. We have some fern curls, so this is like a botanical tree. The fern curls right here. Uh, we have pods, we have berries, and this is a very interesting pod right here. And the seeded eucalyptus right here. But this is a centerpiece that could go on a dining room table, a coffee table, an end table. And I just think it's very warm and welcoming that arrangement. This is another piece. You know, you might have just a little bitty container, a little area that you want to put something. This is in the lucite water again. This is a preserve and botanical piece. It has uh, cedar, berries, amaryllis, and a little bit of twigs. But look how simple this piece is. You know, some people may line three of them up in a windowsill in the kitchen, or if you had a Really nice uh, table setting. Mm -hmm. Battery operated lights are on it. I think and lighting good. is very important. We sell here at Carrigan's Christmas store in the floors um, string lights, things that are like little rice lights that are battery operated. Oftentimes, if you're doing a centerpiece or a tablescape or a runner or over a door or somewhere that you don't have electrical outlets, uh, battery operated lights are very, very nice. Uh, LED lights are 
more now in the amber colors because when LED lights came out, they were like in a, a, a intrusive uh, white light. And you know that there's no light that's that white. It was like a blue light. But now it's more of an amber. It looks like the candlelight that's burning. It looks like the uh, incandescent light bulb. So it's very, very popular to do um, battery operated lights and designs on tablescapes, even on wreaths. So it's not tacky. I think it's sophisticated and it's updated if you can uh, use the product. Uh, we often have product knowledge seminars at our floors and our Christmas stores during this time that we show people how to mix and match ribbons, uh, what to do with candles and lights of candles. Uh, that's a whole other world about candles and lighting. Um, turning down lamps and chandeliers on the dimmer to make them look more inviting and a little more sophisticated than like 100% wide open bright lights. Uh, so different settings, and different moods uh, determine what kind of light you'll do among all these things. Just grab some of our um, ornaments here at the store. We have thousands of ornaments. The, these are natural birch wood. And then there's just a little bit of sparkle put on top, a little berry, some little pine cones, a little greenery. Just so sweet and so cute. I could imagine a little bird in there, like this little bird right here with a little feather. And notice that everything we're showing you is all natural. We do have a lot of glitz and glamour and glitter and different things, but today's uh, talk is all about natural product. Mm -hmm. Using this is um, a birch ball ornament that you can hang on your tree. We have many of these, many that complement this. And you don't have to often hang it in your tree. You can just turn them and put them in a bowl, like if you had a punch bowl or even a unusually shaped container, just something to pull that whole look together. Uh, just found wood with a little bit of um, metal wings, just so cute for your decor added. Okay. Are there any other questions? Yes, uh, Joel, what does botanically preserved mean? Like a uh, uh, magnolia leaf yes. or a berry? Botanically preserved means that it has been air dried or preserved with natural products. It means that that product, once it's been preserved botanically, it will stay in that form like it's found for a while and it's pliable, it's soft. So this is a prime example of botanically preserved. So if this were a dried hydrangea, you couldn't do this to it. And this is a real product and you see nothing has fallen from this product. So it's been treated with a natural uh, glycerin or products that are more natural um, to make this like this. So this hydrangea, if it were dried, it would have broken up. So this is a real live product that's been botanically preserved. We also use the terminology botanically preserved for things that look actually real, realistic. This is a botanically preserved piece of cedar. Sometimes when we have them in our cooler versus what's on the sales floor, we can't tell what they are. And that's the whole trick of us selling what we sell because we want to make it so realistic looking that you can't tell if it's real or not. And you can use it from year to year. Yeah. It's the investment pieces that... If this is stowed away properly and packed nicely, wrapped in paper, not in plastic, then you will save this for a long time. Things have to be wrapped in paper. You can't put it in the attic. Put it in a cool storage place because if you wrap it in paper, it'll keep. If you wrap it in plastic, it's going to stick to the plastic because we often put things in the high heat or places that we don't want to see until next year. And where is that place? Often in the attic. So keep it at uh, room temperature and often wrap with paper, newspaper, craft paper, leftover gift wrap paper. Uh, you might wanna buy rolls of the craft paper, not bubble wrap. I think if you use bubble wrap, it will eventually stick to something. If you got glassware, then you put glassware in high heat areas. But the preservation of all this product means making sure you protect it when you put it up. This, is there any other question you have? Um, if I have some uh, older uh, vases and uh, inherited containers, how do I incorporate those? Well, um, if they're in good shape or partially, you know, used, maybe have some chips or things like that, you still want to keep the piece. But I would say use it, and this is the time to bring them out at the holiday time. Use punch bowls or teacups and silver service pieces, uh, punch bowls, uh, troughs. Uh, wooden dough bowls, any of those things that you might kind of tuck away in the summertime, this is the time to bring it out. And you'll say, well, I've done that every year, but do something different with it. Put greenery in it, put pine cones, put curly willow, put grapevine garland, 
uh, put potted plants. Potted plants are so important to create this look for the holiday. Um, bromeliads, all kind of staghorn ferns, uh, yeah, fig trees, citrus trees. Uh, you know, citrus is very important. This is a thing here with the fruit and the clove fruit. This is a, a good Delarobia look, and we have a lot of our good customers who just love Delarobia. Tom Anders. Tom Anders. These are called Tom Anders. Uh huh. Uh, but these are very, very nice with the cloves in them. And they often smell, even though when they're dry. But the Tom Anders are very, very popular. Uh, there's a little wreath. And you don't have to put lights on everything. The natural product will tell a story on its own. You should have candlelight with natural products. I mean, you can have little white lights and battery operated lights like we talked about. This is a good uh, example of a wreath or a garland that you can have a whole set if that's your theme. I don't know if you can see that high, but there are different berries and pods and cones and uh, thistles. And that's an artificial piece or botanically preserved piece. So we use that terminology uh, a lot in the store. If it looks real, then to me that gets my vote as being botanically correct. And we are very uh, aware of what's hot and what's not. Our customers let us know every day. I was like, Joe, where'd you get that from? Or is that really real? I don't know, you tell me. We even have employees that try to water the plants that are not real. Sometimes they look real. Uh, so it's just the way you mix and match things, juxtapose from shiny things to dull things. But uh, I think everything could be a winner if you put it in its right context. Any other questions? No, thank you so much. And we have a lot of textiles that we use in our designs, like table runners, uh, tablecloths, pillows, decorative pillows. Uh, there's a little pillow right here. Mm -hmm. This is a natural felt piece. This is actually a tree skirt that is uh, made out of felt. Yeah, felt. And it has uh, just petals and leaves all on the bottom. And that could be in the most sophisticated environment, uh, a country environment, a contemporary environment, or a traditional environment. So it's just how you have the ability to mix and match. Um, we have pillows that have different things on it. That's a linen pillow, and it says Merry Christmas. And it has like a laurel leaf garland on it. So this is just one of the sections in the Christmas store that we are uh, incenting with natural product. Um, it doesn't snow here in South Louisiana, but we do like blocked items and we do like things that have a little glitter of diamond dust on them. But uh, they are important in the right environment. Uh, blocked items can be a little more contemporary these days than traditional in our area. Uh, blocked items and trees are often decorated with uh, monochromatic shades of one color depending on the interior design of the home. So we do have wonderful flock Christmas trees anywhere from uh, 7 foot to 12 foot in the store. We have different kind of lights that we put on those trees and there are different uh, types of trees. Some have pine cones, some have whitewashed pine cones, some of them have branches, some of them have crystals on them. So it depends on how formal or informal your area is that you want to accentuate for the holiday. So Melody, why don't you tell us about those uh, natural uh, found metal trees, those little ornaments up there with the bells, the one at the top right there. It's a found object. And so this is uh, things that uh, are a little more rustic in flavor. This is really a bell. But this is a rustic ornament. It could go inside or outside if you have a, a tree on your front porch that you want to do some things with. And this whole section is metal, but it looks natural. Look how pretty that is. It's a piece of mistletoe. So if you bought this ornament, you would have it for years if you hung it on your chandelier at your entrance. It's a natural uh, metal piece. And metal objects are very nice. Uh, it's more informal, but uh, it can be used in any environment. I love this with, um, you can have these sitting out on your table. You can kind of uh, open up these petals right here. You put a little uh, candle in it, have it sitting on your table. These can hang from a tree. Mm -hmm. It's you a tea light object. Mm -hmm. You can actually have them. You can put some battery operated lights in your tree too. Just have that another kind of more vintage antique look to your tree too. I love that idea, just bringing it all together. 
Now this is another piece with the stag horn and the pine cones and the pods. This is a natural piece that was made on a ring and we've secured the found antlers and the pine cones and these are pods right here. So it's masculine, it's simple, you can put a wreath, but we don't advocate a wreath on everything. Real simple, real woodsy, real natural. Back in the woods over here, they, we have a large selection of um, garlands as well. That uh, are the natural preserve pine cones. Here's some pine needles and some spruce. And here are some just you can add to um, already your existing garland that you have at home, just to add a little bit of outside. Um, love with the uh, the tiny pine cones and the large. What else? This piece is a a reproduction of an old bell. It's more of a arts and crafts piece, and it's a bell as well. And it's a piece of terracotta that's inside that's making that bell sound. But something like this, you could just kind of hang on a lantern at your front porch entrance or put on a doorknob at your front door. It's a nice size, proportion wise, but you really don't have to do much to it because it tells the story that it's just the bell and it looks like holiday. It's an angel bell. You know, I think if you were to decorate, you would take away from the simplicity of it, but it's just real simple and it's more of a, an artifact. Uh, a artifact. Any more questions? Now this is important. Um, Melanie is bringing up a vertical design. That's a the new tape on a traditional round wreath. These verticals are obviously on a natural PVC greenery design. And here we go with that full bow that we're talking about. So we're getting a little more into the bows and the ribbon. But this vertical can be embellished with any kind of product ornaments, berries, twigs, branches, bells, you know, you could get creative and maybe put this bell that we just talked about right in here. See? And then that could be more of a showpiece. But it's unlimited what you could do with the vertical like this. You could do anything you like. You could put ornaments, embellishments, uh, you could do nutcrackers, you could do birds. Uh, it's just unlimited what you can do with it, what you can do with it, where you can place it. You can put two together end to end and make it a long centerpiece for a long, long table. You can hang one up vertically under a lantern, or you can put two of them on either side of your door. So I think that has a lot of functions that you can do with the vertical design. Let's talk about Christmas trees for a moment. Uh, Christmas trees are probably the number one item that you would purchase, major purchase for holiday, even if it's a fresh, or a live cut Christmas tree or preserved Christmas tree. And here at Peregrine's are the florists, which we sell the fresh and the live product. Um, there's a nice array of those, so we have to take up orders now for those. But here at this Christmas store, we have got, I think, the best selection around of 10, 12, and 15 for Christmas trees. We carry seven and a half and nine foot Christmas trees, and Christmas trees come in all widths and sizes. So we have slim Christmas trees, we've got a medium tree, we've got a wide tree. So depending on the space that you have at your home, uh, the amount of lights that are on a Christmas tree, we may have some trees with 2,500 lights and 5,000 lights, and we may have something as simple as 100 lights on a tree. Light bulbs come in all shapes and sizes, some kind of little kid lights, sometimes they're life-size light bulbs, but uh, they're different trees with different looks throughout home. They're trees that are going to a contemporary environment. To me, contemporary means minimal, so you wouldn't decorate a tree as though uh, it was an old world or a retro tree, because to me, that would be a lot of merchandise, a lot of ornaments, ribbons, twigs, sticks, uh, clowns, or birds, or whatever your theme would go for, or nutcrackers. Uh, Gnomes are big. Uh, so it depends on what kind of tree you have, which kind of space you want to fill. If you want a fat tree, a tall skinny tree, a narrow tree. So we have about six different styles of Christmas trees here and about 
seven different uh, textures of Christmas trees. I think the balsam fir of the mixed trees are probably the most popular ones. We have some with bracts in between. Um, and a good thing about artificial trees is that you can put heavy, heavy ornaments on these artificial Christmas trees and your ornaments won't fall or break. Oftentimes, I don't care if you get a Christmas tree early in the season or late in the season, if those branches are drying out or dropping, you can rest assured that the ornaments are gonna drop or it's gonna look really tired. When Christmas comes, everything's gonna be hanging like they're tired. So a good thing about artificial trees is that uh, you can put heavy, heavy ornaments on the tree. You can put a lot of ornaments and embellishments on the tree and that tree will look the same a month later when you've decorated it. So there's a big selection of little pencil trees and I'm just looking out into the um, sales floor here. We've got flock trees, we've got natural green trees, we've got Mardi Gras trees, we've got black trees, we've got spruce trees, we've got trees that look like a Santa hat with the white pom-pom at the top and a white collar around. Uh, we've got trees that are shaped as topiaries. We've got little branch trees, we've got Charlie Brown trees. So trees are very important. It just depends on where you want to put it, what you want it to say. Uh, and I think it's your taste versus anything else uh, that you do. And at this time, we just want to thank all of you all for having us here to talk to you about what makes us tick and what we think the holiday season should look like here, 2020, coming from Peregrine's Florist and Peregrine's Christmas store. We hope you enjoy it.